So the Progressive Caucus managed to piss off just about everybody with the recent political stunt that they pulled. So let me give you the backstory to this here. They release uh, a, an article, or not an article, a letter, I should say, to President Biden. And the gist of the letter, and we'll get into the specifics here in a second, the gist of the letter is, hey man, um, you're doing a good job with the whole Russia and Ukraine thing. We totally stand with Ukraine. But, you know, we think it's also a good idea to probably just have a line of communication open with Russia and talk to them and try however we can to do negotiation and diplomacy. That's the gist of the letter. Okay. Um, So they released this letter. Colossal backlash online. Colossal. I mean, even I mostly run in lefty uh, Twitter circles. And even in lefty Twitter circles, there were a lot of people who were like, bad idea. Bad idea. Don't say this. This is bad. I don't like this. Um, And so... They took the backlash for half a day, full day, whatever it was. Um, then Jayapal, who originally signed the letter, released a uh, a statement of clarification. So I just, I just, bro, is it people mad at me? I just want to, let me just, here's, here's what I really meant and stuff. You know what I'm saying? Like this, this, this is what I really mean. So this is, this is good, right? And the reaction was still, boo, 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 fuck you, boo. And so then, um, They retracted the letter. All right. Now, um, to say this is Weasley is an understatement. Because, by the way, it gets even more Weasley. So then they say, no, you don't even understand, bro. We had drafted this letter months and months ago. And, you know, we just released it now. And I didn't even approve the release. This is what Jayapal said. I didn't even approve the release. There was just one of my staffers just went rogue and did it, bro. That's what happened. So it's my staffer's fault. What? What are you doing? What are you doing? What are you doing? Okay, so... Just fix fix the lighting here. Okay. That didn't really fix it, but anyway. Um, So now let me give you the specifics of what was said. So um, here we have a a good tweet from Sock Done Left. Soak Done Left. Sosh. Sosh Done Left. I I don't... (laughs) I don't know how you say that. Anyway. Uh, people bashing the Progressive Caucus for boosting diplomacy should read the letter. They clearly explain, U.S. weapons helped deal a historic military defeat to Russia. Russia illegally invaded Ukraine, caused mass suffering, displacement, death. Uh, more war worsens all of the above. So again, in other words, the point here is, they're not going all like, hey, why don't you give Putin every single thing he wants? That seems like a good idea. That's not what they're saying. That's not, why don't you... Uh, why don't you act like Neville Chamberlain and do full appeasement and give the man every single thing he wants, and then we think it'll all it'll all work out? No, it's like a nuanced position that they're staking here. So here, I'll give you the specifics. Um, I don't know how well you guys are going to be able to see this because of my video on the screen, but just bear with me. I'll read it, and you'll know what it says. Dear Mr. President, we write with appreciation for your commitment to Ukraine's legitimate struggle against Russia's war of aggression. Your support for the self-defense of an independent, sovereign, and democratic state has been supported by Congress, including through various appropriations of military, economic, and humanitarian aid in furtherance of this cause. Your administration's policy was critical to enable the Ukrainian people, through their courageous fighting and heroic sacrifices, to deal with a historic military defeat to Russia. Uh, to deal a historic military defeat to Russia, forcing Russia to dramatically scale back the stated goals of the invasion. This was when they like tried to take um, Kiev and failed, and then... They basically had to back off, and they were mostly in eastern Ukraine. Okay. Crucially, you achieve this while also maintaining that it is imperative to avoid direct military conflict with Russia, which would lead to, quote, World War III, something we must strive to prevent. The risk of nuclear weapons being used has been estimated to be higher now than at any time since the height of the Cold War, given the catastrophic possibilities of nuclear escalation and miscalculation, which only increases the long... The longer this war continues, we agree with your goal of avoiding direct military conflict as an overriding national security priority. So this is them saying just, okay, uh, we see what's going on here. We blame Russia, but for the love of God, uh, let's not do World War III with Russia. This is what they're saying. Given the destruction created by this war for Ukraine and the world, as well as the risk of catastrophic escalation, we also believe it is in the interests of Ukraine, the United States, and the world to avoid a prolonged conflict. 
For this reason, we urge you to pair the military and economic support the United States has provided to Ukraine with a proactive diplomatic push, redoubling efforts to seek a realistic framework for a ceasefire. This is consistent with your recognition that, quote, there's going to have to be a negotiated settlement here, and your concern that Vladimir Putin, quote, doesn't have a way out right now, and I'm trying to figure out what we do about that. They continue. Russia's invasion has caused incalculable harm for the people of Ukraine, leading to the deaths of countless thousands of civilians, Ukrainian soldiers, and displacement of 13 million people, while Russia's recent seizure of cities in Ukraine's east have led to the most pivotal moment in the conflict and the consolidation of Russian control over roughly 20% of Ukraine's territory. The conflict threatens an additional tens of millions more worldwide as skyrocketing prices in wheat, fertilizer, and fuel spark acute crises in global hunger and poverty. A war that is allowed to grind on for years, potentially escalating in intensity and geographic scope, threatens to displace, kill, and immiserate far more Ukrainians while causing hunger, poverty, and death around the world. The conflict has also contributed to elevated gas and food prices at home, fueling inflation and high oil prices for Americans in recent months. Economists believe that if the situation in Ukraine is stabilized, some of the speculative concerns driving higher fuel costs will subsidize and likely lead to a drop in world oil prices. Okay, so you guys get the gist of it here. I'll give you one more important point uh, that's that's uh, presented to us here. Given the destruction created by this war for Ukraine and the world, as well as the risk of catastrophic escalation, we also believe it is in interest of Ukraine, the United States, and the world to avoid a prolonged conflict. Okay, we actually read this part already. Um, yeah. So anyway, uh, that's the gist of the letter. Now, I don't know what you guys think of it. To me, that comes across as very nuanced. They're like, hey, man, yeah, we get it. Russia is acting as the imperialist power in this instance. They are illegally and offensively invading a country that didn't attack them. That's fucked up. That ain't right. That's not good. But also, let's understand that they have nukes, and we don't want this to escalate out of control, and we need a direct line of communication with them, and to the extent that it's even possible, let's have a framework of negotiation and diplomacy so we could probably get out of this and not have tens of thousands or hundreds of thousands or millions more people die or be displaced or have massive economic problems, etc. Okay, then, here's Jayapal um, coming out, and this is what we call cucking yourself. This is this is cuckdom here. This is uh, full-scale cuckery in my book. Representative Pramila Jayapal, chair of the Congressional Progressive Caucus, issued the following statement clarifying the position of a letter to President Biden. Quote, in a letter to President Biden today, my colleagues and I advocated for the administration to continue ongoing military and economic support for Ukrainians while pursuing diplomatic support to Ukraine to ensure we are helpful partners on efforts to reach a solution that is acceptable to the people of Ukraine. Let me be clear. We are united as Democrats in our unequivocal commitment to supporting Ukraine in their fight for their democracy and freedom in the face of the illegal and outrageous Russian invasion, and nothing in the letter advocates for a change in that support. Diplomacy is an important tool that can save lives, but it is just one tool. And we also made explicitly clear in our letter, and will continue to make clear, we support President Biden and his administration's commitment to nothing about Ukraine without Ukraine. So in other words... Um, just have totally, uh, just have a situation where, um, Ukraine can effectively loot the treasury, give them as, as much money as they want, as many weapons as they want, and we don't have any lines, nothing about Ukraine without Ukraine. So we can't say, hey, we have a position on this and we're representing the interests of the United States and we may have a disagreement because we want to get to peace as soon as possible in as reasonable a way as possible, and uh, you guys might want, like, literally every inch of your territory back, but, you know, maybe that's not possible. Maybe that gets us to a point where homeboy does press the red button. Because as Biden himself said, you gotta have at least a face-saving situation here where he can feel like, I didn't get totally obliterated, and then maybe we could de-escalate as a result of that. So, this is them, yes, she says, oh, no, 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 I'm just clarifying, I'm not backpedaling. This is a bit of a backpedal. Because before you were saying, yeah, I'm fine with continued uh, weapons, but definitely do negotiation and diplomacy as well to avoid a worst case scenario. Now you're saying, I, no, I, the weapons are the most important part, and we're, we're totally united, and we're just in favor of the weapons. Because, yeah, the Biden administration is not uh, pushing for diplomacy and negotiations right now. They're not doing that. So to say we totally agree with Biden, what you're saying is, okay, yeah, the whole thing we said about a negotiation, negotiation and diplomacy, just forget that. Forget that part. But it gets worse again. 
This is where she totally retracts the letter. Okay, here's what she says. Here's what she says. Congressional Progressive Caucus Chair Statement on Ukraine Letter. Representative Pramila Jayapal, Chair of the Congressional Progressive Caucus, issued the following statement on a letter sent regarding Ukraine. The Congressional Progressive Caucus hereby withdraws its recent letter to the White House regarding Ukraine. The letter was drafted several months ago, but unfortunately was released by staff without vetting. As chair of the caucus, I accept responsibility for this because of the timing. Our message is being conflated by some as being equivalent to the recent statement by Republican leader McCarthy threatening an end to aid to Ukraine if Republicans take over. The proximity of these statements created the unfortunate appearance that Democrats who have strongly and unanimously supported and voted for every package of military, strategic, and economic assistance to the Ukrainian people are somehow aligned with Republicans who seek to pull the plug on American support for President Zelensky and the Ukrainian forces. Nothing could be further from the truth. Every war ends with diplomacy, and this one will too after Ukrainian victory. The letter sent yesterday, although restating the basic principle, has been conflated with GOP opposition to support for the Ukrainians, uh, just defense, just defense of their national sovereignty. As such, it's a distraction at this time, and we withdraw the letter. Let me ask them this question, Pramila Jaipal, the Progressive Caucus, so-called Progressive Caucus. What is your actual position on the war in Ukraine and U.S. support for it? What is your actual position? Do you not have a position? Have you not thought it through? What is your actual position? Because you first said, okay, it's, I'm fine continuing to arm them, even though we've already given $80 billion worth. I'm fine continuing to arm them. But yes, we should... Focus on diplomacy and negotiation, and I hope Russia is talking to the U.S., and the U.S. is talking to Russia, and we could start moving towards peace to de-escalate because the stakes are nuclear Armageddon. That was your position. Then it's like, okay, well, we want to stress the weapons part. The weapons are good. Keep sending the weapons over there. And, you know, if you want to negotiate, great. If not, don't. And now it's just, just, okay, endless weapons and uh, fuck negotiation and fuck diplomacy. So what I'm curious about is what these totally vapid morons actually believe about the conflict. Because I, I can tell you what I believe. What I believe is very simple. I think Ukraine deserves to have a fighting chance at self-defense. So I was perfectly fine with the first two or three packages of weapons that went to Ukraine. You know, uh, they tremendous amount of small arms, for example. These are weapons that are not escalatory by their nature. These are weapons for self-defense. So totally fine with that. But then after that, it became clear a lot of this is just military industrial complex fuckery where you're, you know, you're enriching Raytheon and Boeing and Halliburton. And, you know, this is cloaked in a veil of being like noble and the right thing to do. But ultimately, it is fucking dangerous. This psychopath is threatening nukes on a weekly basis now. You have our own defense officials have come out and said, yeah, I put nuclear uh, war at, a, at a, about a 25% chance of happening. 25%? What the fuck? How's that not red alarm? Red alert everywhere. I, I don't understand. And even at a time when there's a 25% chance of nuclear war, and we've already given $80 billion in weapons to Ukraine, you have the Progressive Caucus mildly says... You know, maybe we could just have a have a little conversation with the other side, and maybe we could do a little bit of negotiation and diplomacy to like de-escalate. And then they're shouted down, and they go, "Who me, bro? I don't even like peace, bro. Peace is peace is gay. Peace is super gay. Peace is whack. I don't even like peace, bro." So I'm curious, what to, putting aside all the politicking and posturing and angling here and playing the insider game in D.C., what the fuck do you morons actually believe? What do you actually believe? The most important thing you can and should do right now is a peace deal. That doesn't mean you give Russia every single thing they fucking want. Of course not. Nobody wants to set the precedent of, hey, a bigger country can invade a smaller country, and as long as they have nukes, they can get whatever the fuck they want. Now, maybe there's a tiny percentage of fringe weirdos who want that. People who are, like, literally just flat out pro-Russian authoritarianism and imperialism. Tiny fringe want that. But the overwhelming majority of people are not on that page. And they want to have a good faith discussion, negotiation, and, and use diplomacy 
to get us away from the brink of nuclear war. You know, it'd be nice if we take it from a 25% chance of nuclear war to maybe a 1%, or let's go 0.5% or 0.1%. That'd be nice. That'd be nice. And remember, guys, when the stakes are this high, even just basic miscommunication can be catastrophic. It really can be. Just a misinterpretation of what the other side is doing can, can lead to devastating consequences where tens of thousands or hundreds of thousands of people are dead. And with the position that they're taking, what they're doing is they're signing up for, at the very least, just drag the war out. Five years, six years, ten years, whatever it is. Have, uh, you know, however many people, tens of thousands, hundreds of thousands of people die. They're actively signing up for that best case scenario. Worst case scenario is... Nuclear Armageddon. That's the scope of what the Congressional Progressive Caucus is now in favor of. I just, it's so hard for me to wrap my mind around the idea that a basic, mild recommendation of like, maybe, maybe we could peace, maybe, maybe, just a little, just a little bit of talking, just a little bit of negotiation and diplomacy, just a, a little bit of give and take, just, just a little bit of that. And they ran away from their own fucking shadow after that. Because a bunch of cackling hyena morons online were like, I don't like that. Peace is, peace is whack. We don't like peace. We're not pro-peace here. We're not pro-talking. You want to talk? Fuck talking. Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ. Look, I get it, man. I understand the Ukrainian position. I understand a majority of them want to keep fighting for every last inch of land. I get all of that. I get all of that. We also, though, play a major role in this conflict. They are only allowed to, uh, to wage war and defend themselves insofar as we allow it. We've already given them $80 billion worth of weapons. And if the Hawks were right, we'd already be in a safer position right now. Because we've given them the $80 billion worth of weapons. We've gradually escalated the kind of weaponry that we give them. So if they were right, it would have, we would have lowered the chance of nuclear war now. That's not the case. It's been the opposite. It's gone up. It's gone up. So, for the love of God, saying, I want to do negotiation, I want to do diplomacy, that doesn't mean give Putin everything he wants. That means let's be reasonable and not have nuclear war. The idea that anybody objects to that is mind-boggling to me. It really is. It really is. Because guess what? Even if I'm wrong, even if, Kyle, you are Neville Chamberlain and Putin is Hitler and, you know, now you did a peace deal with him and he ripped it up within a couple of years and now he's invading other places. You should still be thankful because that means I bought us another two, three, four years before nuclear Armageddon. So, I mean, that's my take on it. I understand the other perspective, but... The inability of people on that side to realize that they are, based on all the evidence, all the data, and all the logic in the world, they are getting us closer to nuclear war. That drives me crazy. The idea that they won't even accept the notion that there are risks to endless arming, endless funding, and endless escalation, and no negotiation and diplomacy... That they think, well, this is obviously the clear way to go, bro. Well, then why the fuck are we a 25% chance of nuclear war, according to our own defense officials? You tell me. You tell me. I don't know, but these weaselly-ass progressives are fucking useless on this issue. Absolutely useless. I'm gonna have to, uh... I'm gonna have to, uh, retract my statement that, uh... Peace is good? I'm gonna have to retract that. I'm gonna have to retract that. I stepped on, stepped on some toes by saying, "I don't want to die in nuclear apocalypse." I stepped, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I apologize. I apologize for that. I apologize for that. Cucks, colossal cucks. Cable news is ripping us apart, dividing the country, making it impossible to function as a society, and making it impossible to know just what is true and what is false. But the good news is, they are failing, and they know it. 
That is why we're building something new, a new mainstream, a healthier one, something more trustworthy, something that we are going to need in one of the most pivotal times in American history. We are building up here for the midterms, for the upcoming presidential election, but we need your help. So if you can help us out by becoming a premium member today at breakingpoints.com, we're trying to change America for the better and the entire world. So what are you waiting for, guys? Go to breakingpoints.com and sign up and help us build a new mainstream.